you're most likely familiar with such AA batteries, because they were not only the main source of energy for lots of Game Boys, but even nowadays power devices like my multimeter or my differential probes. So needless to say, I got quite the selection here, for which I also got a dedicated charger who does a job just fine. For years now, I've been going through this discharge slash charge cycle of my AA batteries, and honestly, never had any problems. Which got me thinking why I use such batteries in my projects only once before, but otherwise always go with lithium ion or LiPo batteries. To answer that question, I will not only thoroughly compare nickel metal hydride batteries to lithium ion and LiPo batteries in this video, but I will also show you how to properly use them to power a device and how hard it actually is to charge them up properly, which I will demonstrate by building my own charger. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online learning community for creatives that offers dozens of interesting and useful classes. There are so many different topics that I can almost guarantee that you will find something of interest, which does not exclusively need to be electronics, but maybe also video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro, which I also use for my videos. The class Advanced Video Editing with Adobe Premiere Pro 2020 by Jordi Vanderputz really did the trick for me, and even taught me a couple of new things. So if you're interested, then feel free to click the link in the video description, because the first 1000 subscribers that do that will get a 1 month free trial. First off, let me make it clear that I will be focusing on nickel metal hydride batteries which you can still get pretty easily. So no non-rechargeable alkaline batteries or prehistoric nickel cadmium batteries. But even with the standardized AA battery size of nickel metal hydride cells, we already got the first big difference between them, which is their capacity. My trusty Analoop one for example comes with a capacity of 2450 milliamp hours while the Energizer one comes with only a bit more than half of that. And because my Analoop model also comes with a datasheet, it will be my prime example for this video. To start off, we can see that its nominal voltage is 1.2 volts, which in comparison to lithium ion or polymer batteries is only one third of their nominal voltage. That makes it difficult to power a 3.3V or 5V project with just one AA battery. Except if you get yourself a specialized IC that can boost the battery voltage. But you usually use at least two nickel metal hydride batteries in series for 3.3V systems and four of them in series for 5V systems. As you can see in the datasheets, the usable voltage range varies between 1.4V and an absolute minimum which you should not undershoot of 1V, which gives us these voltage ranges for the battery packs. So obviously it is way easier to achieve a higher voltage with lithium ion or polymer batteries, which can be especially important for high power applications like powering a BLDC motor. In such a case, the lithium battery always comes with a C rating, which describes the maximum current it can deliver, and sometimes we really need such high current capabilities. Our AA battery however does not come with such a rating in its datasheet, but instead we can find an internal impedance value of around 25mΩ. This resistance is positioned in series with our battery voltage so that the maximum current is limited by it, and thus in this theory should be around 48 amps. I didn't really believe this calculated value though, because nickel metal hydride batteries are known for not having such high current ratings, and as you can see by testing the Analoop one, we get a short circuit current of roughly around 26 amps, which was more than I expected. So powering current hungry devices with them is not recommended. But did you notice that just a second ago I had no problem shorting a nickel metal hydride battery, 
even though I would never do that with a lithium battery. Because I actually tested that before and the results were partly very unsafe and dangerous. Nickel metal hydride is more forgiving in that regards and normally it does not explode or cause any kind of fire. You can even over discharge them quite a bit before they lose capacity and in case of an overcharge with a small current flow they only heat up but work perfectly fine afterwards. Ok, last but not least when comparing these three battery types we need to focus on how much energy they can store in relation to their price, size and weight. So I did all the required measurements and research for my nickel metal hydride, lithium ion and lipo batteries and came up with rather interesting but foreseeable results I would say. As you can see nickel metal hydride not only offers pretty much the worst price energy relation but also the worst size energy relation and weight energy relation. And with those results we got a basic overview of the battery type so far. But to truly understand the subject matter we have to dig deeper when it comes to powering a device, so the discharge scenario and when charging up the battery. First off powering a device, for which I got a 2 cell and 4 cell example. Of course it is important to protect the batteries from over discharge under 1 volts, which the devices implement by turning off at that point. But a problem is the different capacity of the used cells, which like here can result in an over discharge of one cell while the other one is still good to go. So I thought there would be some devices that monitor each battery voltage and turn off as soon as one gets depleted. But nope, in all devices I checked they only care about the sum voltage. The reason is probably, like I said before, that such batteries can withstand a beating. And when charging them up you usually charge each one individually. And not like with lithium battery packs where you charge them up in series. In which such balance problems can easily lead to an overcharge of a cell and thus to its destruction. But then again you usually use a BMS aka battery management system for lithium battery packs that prevents such a problem by balance charging each cell. So out of curiosity I also searched for nickel metal hydride BMS and other protective ICs or circuits. But honestly there was just not much to be found. All I got were some rather interesting DIY attempts and like mentioned before a boost converter that prevents under voltage. That is nothing if you compare that to lithium protection slash charge circuits with this TP4056 board being the most popular one that offers all the protection you need and easy charging. So I guess because of the nature of nickel metal hydride batteries all you need is a fuse in case of a short circuit and an under voltage protection circuit and that is it. But going back to the TP4056 charging circuit for lithium batteries which as you can see firstly charges them with a constant current and then a constant voltage of 4.2 volts. This is pretty easy to accomplish even with just a lab bench power supply. So do you think you can charge a nickel metal hydride battery just as easily? Well not really. Now there is a charge method called trickle charge in which you simply set a constant current of around 1 20th of the battery capacity charge the battery with that and wait the 20 hours until the battery is full and all excess charge will get dissipated as heat. A really simple solution that sadly takes way too long. Which is why next I searched for proper nickel metal hydride charging ICs and found this rather modern LCC4010 that even uses a synchronous buck converter for efficiently stepping down the input voltage. I can highly recommend checking out its data sheets if you're interested in all the juicy details when it comes to nickel metal hydride charging. But to explain it a bit more practical, I firstly altered the given example application schematic and then built this to get up on a piece of proof board, which all in all took me around 3 hours. And as soon as the circuit was complete I hooked it up to power and inserted a battery which started charging without a problem. 
Now you might already have noticed that I attached an NTC thermistor to the battery. That will change its voltage outputs when its temperature changes. The reason is that a bigger temperature change can be one indicator for the termination of the charging process. Another one can be that at above the core voltage of 1.5 volts when the battery is full, its voltage drops a bit. So the circuit right now pumps a constant current of around 1 amp into the battery until one or both of these things happen. At which point the current decreases to a trickle current to top the battery off within a time limit. That means charging a nickel metal hydride battery properly is actually quite complicated. Which can be seen by the sheer size of the circuitry of my commercial charger. So all in all, while nickel metal hydride is certainly not the best battery technology, it does offer some unique advantages, which makes it quite useful, especially for low power consumer electronics, where you want users to use their own already available batteries. Sadly though, I do not often make such projects, but that does not mean that nickel metal hydride is obsolete nowadays. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!